Hey everyone, I'm Matt Garen. I'm the founder here at FounderCo. And today in this workshop, we're gonna be talking about how to determine your target market, which might be one of the most crucial elements of starting your business. So let's just, let's just get into it. So how we're gonna approach this is, A, why is it really important to target, like to define your target market? And number two, how to actually narrow your market. So it's not just everyone or it's just like this huge niche or whatever, we're actually gonna show how to do that. And then the third way is actually how to actually use this target market because if you don't know actually how to use it, well, there's no point of, of us actually going over this. So we'll go into in depth on how to actually use this target market data with that. Before we actually get into the workshop though, make sure you have this worksheet, the worksheet that's a, in a link on this bottom of this video um, in the description. Um, Cause if you don't have that, you, you're not gonna get the full value. So print it out, you can even type it out or have the video to the side and like be typing it as you go. Whatever works for you, whatever you think is most, most helpful, do that. But yeah, again, the link is in the description of this video. Why is your target market really important? Well, determining your market is what tells you what to focus on. Because if you don't have a focus with your startup, you're not gonna go anywhere. The analogy to think of would be if you're going on, if you're going into your car and want to travel somewhere. You don't just get into your car and like, oh, just like kind of lollygag and kind of drive around town. No, you have a point where you're trying to go, whether that's like the gas station, the grocery store, a friend's house, it doesn't matter. You actually have a point where you want to go and giving your target market helps you set that trajectory with your marketing and product development especially. Now, the second way is it actually helps you again with product development and telling you how to actually build your product or service um, around your market because if you're trying to build a product for, for everybody, you're building a product for no one. You want to build a product or service that fits a market because and solves that particular problem within that market. So having the target market tells you how to actually build your problem, your solution to it. And then finally, it actually is really helpful because for your startup, your new business, you don't have many resources most likely. And if you do, awesome, but most of you don't. Um, and with that, if you have a target market, it can really make you more efficient and your startup can be started for a way less than it actually would be if you're trying to target everyone at the same time. Um, because let's, for example, if you're doing um, Facebook ads, which I know is a really popular way of doing um, initial market research these days, if you're doing Facebook ads and trying to do a, you know, this huge marketing campaign to everyone, that's gonna be really expensive. But if you narrow it down to a really small, like a few niches to test things out, um, that is a really great way to experiment and see how things go and that, that'll make it way more cost-effective rather than just like throwing a bunch of money to experiment. You want your experiments to be really cost-effective and not costly. That's our goal and having that target market helps you dramatically do that. At the end of the day though, your target market impacts your entire business. So that's why this is really crucial and might be the most crucial. If you're going to watch one workshop that we do, this might be the single workshop that you do. So just know it's gonna affect everything that you do and I hopefully you're walking through this and take your time with it. Don't rush through it, take your time. If there's one thing to really like make sure you know is do this, your target market. If you can know your target market like the back of your hand, that'll help you dramatically and increase your odds of your business being successful and actually being able to pay you and employees and growing a team and doing all the fun stuff that you wanna do with your new business. So that's why a target market is really important. Now let's get into how to actually define your target market. The first step is actually defining what your value proposition is. And a value proposition, you can think about, about it one or two ways. The first way would be, you know, the really obvious is what value are you bringing to your customers? The second way to think about it, if it's more helpful, is how are you actually solving the problem that your customer has? So it can be one of the two, however, what helps, whatever helps you in your own head think about it, do that way. But in this process, we're gonna do it in four different steps. So step one is what problem are you solving? And keep this really, really simple. You wanna just say, hey, I, you know, we save time or we save money, keep it really easy. Now step two is another easy one, just keep it really simple. And what is your product or service? Now it can be, you know, I make cupcakes or I shovel snow. You wanna keep these, two, these first two steps really easy and light. So that way, if you handed this to someone right off the street, they would understand exactly what you do and what problem you're solving. Step three, now that is, how is the problem being solved without you? Now you can take a little more time with this step because I think it's really important to understand, and this is the kind of the crucial part, part of the value proposition, is how big of a hurdle is it right now for your potential customer base? Is it something that they can solve really easily without you, or is this something they can't even solve at all, or is it, you know, it's a really big, gigantic task to actually get um, that problem solved currently? This is a really good 
you know measuring stick for how great your value is for your company. Um, so you want to if this is like hey like they're solving it really easily or like the hurdle isn't very big, um, that's a, just put up a red flag of like hey this maybe we're not in the right you know the right target market or things like that. Um, just keep it in mind. This is a really big step for your value proposition. But if hey this, if it's a really big problem they can't even solve right now, that is a great way of describing your value proposition and knowing that you're actually creating value. Step four and the last step in correlates with step three is another one to take a little bit some time with is why does your solution work best? Um, why does it actually solve that problem and why is it actually worth going through you know, your solution rather than the, what's currently out there even if it's nothing? It's, your product is still gonna be a slight hurdle even if it fits in you know, magically and perfectly. There's still gonna be a learning curve. So you're still brand new and habits and things like that. So just understand with that, you know, why does it work best? If you can, if you can answer all four of these questions, this can really put you in the right framework for understanding your target market because you'll actually know like here's how we provide value to our target market and if you know if you can describe the target market and describe the value you're bringing to them that's going to help you dramatically create your product market it and everything so that's why we're doing value propositions is that so you can really kind of understand the customer mindset because i think if you you really can't go into target market without understanding the customer mindset now let's do an actual example of these four steps for value proposition. And in this example, what we'll do, is we'll use it as if Foundry Co. had its own ice cream shop that was like in a local neighborhood or anything like that. So that way, you know, you can understand it. It's really tangible. And who doesn't love ice cream? That's why we're gonna use ice cream. So yeah, we're, let's use an example of a local ice cream shop. So first step, what problem are we solving? Um, the problem would be that like let's say there's no ice cream shops in the area or there's not really a great kids at, like for an area for kids to go and hang out with especially with their families or, or for parents to bring their kids and socialize with other families outside of like their houses um, so we can be with the Foundry Co ice cream shop we can be that potentially so that's what step two is is what is your product or service a local ice cream shop again this one's easy like we want to keep it really short and sweet problem we're solving we didn't keep it as short and sweet you know as we'd like but it's still it gets the point across what we are and for some businesses this is super easy and some others it might be a little bit tougher hey take it easy just try to do an overarching you know problem that you're trying to do it doesn't have to be super specific step three how is the problem being solved currently um, so currently you know kind of like I mentioned in the problem solving is that families would go to another family's home or they go to a place that isn't kids friendly yeah, they might be going to like a brewery or they might be going to another family's house that isn't necessarily built for, you know, for a bunch of families to be hanging out with their kids. Um, or maybe it is, but it's not that family might not want their, you know, all these families all the time over there. So we can, you know, that's what's being over right now. And then why does final step is why does your solution work best? Well, we'll be a kid friendly shop with affordable family, you know, pricing. And we're going to be close to the majority of like where kids events occur. So if there's like a soccer field and then there's like this, you know, local elementary school or high school is all nearby, or there's, you know, some, you know, minor league baseball stadium is nearby, uh, whatever, like wherever, you know, there's a family, a lot of families are, that's where we want to be um, so that we can kind of fit within that problem that that's being, cause they don't, they don't have a local spot. So we want to be that local spot. So really easy don't overthink don't overthink these answers keep them super simple and i think the biggest step in all of this would be step three because if you can understand how that is i think you can really understand what your target market mindset will be going into this now that we've gone over your value proposition now let's use that value proposition and think through what your target market is now before we get actually into all the nitty-gritty of it let's define what a target market is and your target market is the customer base that you are actually solving the problem for so it's the person that you actually want to help with um, that could be you know a soccer mom it could be a specific type of engineer that you're helping whatever it might be you want to be able to define it within just a few words especially on a really broad scale but we want to know them like the back of your hand and to do that can be a little bit tricky because there's not exact science to it but we're going to try our best to do that but yeah, before we actually get into your specific business, let's actually think through your competitors' businesses because if we can actually look through your competitors' businesses, it actually can help you define your own target market, um, especially because doing work on this, this kind of work with your own business can be a little bit tricky at times because you, you're in the weeds of your business and sometimes you're not thinking super clear with it because you're, you're thinking about all these little details. But if we think through your competitors or other types of businesses, it, we, sometimes it can be way clearer. And if we use these analogy businesses, it can be really helpful. 
So that's why we're gonna, we're gonna actually start with your competitor's businesses and what their target market is for your competitors. So if you can think of your top two or three competitors, three the better, if you can do three, that's perfect. If you can do two, that's okay too. You just wanna be able to get a kind of a picture of what they're trying to serve and how they're doing it. So the first step of actually defining what your target market is for your competitors is one, actually what's their demographic? What's their age range? Where are they living? You know, what's their income range? The super basics of whatever, it's like if you were doing a census um, for your business, what, like for your target market, what would it be? The second one, which isn't, tip, isn't is not typical really, is where are they spending their free time? Are they at the breweries? Are they at family events? Are they at kids events? Where are they? Where are they hanging out? We wanna know that. Um, because and then if you actually know, we want to be able to live their lifestyle. If you know their lifestyle, you're going to know your customer base significantly better. And the more we know your business, or the more you know your customer, the more you're going to be able to tailor and create a product or service that solves their need. And the more you do that, the more your business is going to succeed. Now, this third way, which is a little bit different of thinking it, but hopefully this will help you really helpful and be able to picture what your target market is and the, the lifestyle they are trying to go after, is one, is if they had to pick, if your target market had to pick, or your competitor's target market had to pick one specific retail store to, to pick to always shop at, or what's their favorite retail store to stop, shop at, what would it be? Whether it be Target, Walmart, Amazon, pick that retail shop and say like, here's what they are. Because retailers, for some reason, they we all know, who, or we can all picture in our heads who that specific person might be for those retailers. It might be a little bit easier. Now, the second one is a little bit more vague again, but hopefully it'll help you kind of narrow it down even a little more, is if, that, if your competitor's target market had to pick one specific social media site to use forever, what would it be? Or what would be their favorite social media platform? Well, because there's a lot of big differences between people who love Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook or TikTok. Uh, pick what would be their favorite social media platform. So with that, actually think through when you do your competitor analysis, do it for each one of them. They might be serving different target markets when you go through that, and that's awesome to know because you might even be serving a totally third target market. But the more you can actually understand what they're, what, who they're trying to serve, the more you can be able to serve who you're trying to serve too. Um, they might not be serving the same market, which might, are they, you know, it might alert you to be like, hey, they're actually not a competitor, they're more complementary, um, which they might be a little bit of both. That's okay too. But, Go through it and you can see in this example going forward how, how we did it. Okay, so let's look at the competitors if we were looking at this from the Foundry Co. ice cream store. So the competitor one, let's say it's a brand name ice cream store like a Dairy Queen or Baskin Robbins. We probably have pretty similar markets, at least that's our assumption. Um, so demographics would be relatively, they're probably pretty broad, but let's say they're, they're mainly focused on like families and teens. Um, those are like, you know, they just got their, you know, their driving license, they're 17. Um, that would be probably their target market is that you know they're getting ice cream in the summer and all that. Now the free time, let's say you know they're most likely going to school events, kids sporting go, like sports events. Maybe they go to like a minor league baseball game or the sporting events around town. Um, that would be our assumption. So um, this can kind of give us a good picture of what their mindset might be going into it. And then the retail store, um, you know, families need a lot of groceries, so you know we would assume that maybe you know, like Costco is their favorite thing because they can get you know groceries at a discount. And then social media, parents love talking or showing off their families on Facebook, so we'll assume it's Facebook on this one. Now, keep in mind when you're going through all these, these are assumptions like that you're that you want to have or that you do have. Um, so you know, with with assumptions, you want to test them to make sure they're actually accurate because if they're not accurate, they're going to totally kind of up in your entire business and especially if they're gonna come at the wrong time if they, if you assume wrong. So if you're still doing like problem interviews or still kind of testing which target market is yours, um, you know, write these down as assumptions and then go test them. Go see, you know, go talk to a potential customer and then, hey, you can start asking these, like you can ask these kind of questions that are they're kind of oddballs but you can kind of get a gist of who they are or just ask who they are and then you can kind of, you'll be able to narrow down and know like, hey, no, this is true, this is not you'll be able to go through that really easily the more conversations you have with your potential customers. Now with competitor two, compet competitors are just anything that kind of, that might prevent like your solution being used rather than someone like, like something else. So in this case, it's not necessarily another ice cream store or another like grocery store or anything like that. It's the, it would be just like, hey, they're hanging out at another family's home instead of coming to our ice cream shop. That would be a competitor. So. In this, you know, in this case, family and teens again would be the target market. Their free time, you know, 
probably pretty similar like going to schools events and things like that but let's say you know they're spending a lot of time watching netflix watching youtube you know doing crafts with their kids say especially if they have younger you know kids um that would be our assumption there and then retail store you know let's say they're it's a higher end neighborhood um and they really love whole foods and that's a big you know organic groceries and all that would be um, something to keep in mind and this way the, it, it, as you can see with this one the retail store between the two so like costco would be you know more um, they wouldn't be like the Whole Foods type quality of food, but Whole Foods would be the higher quality. So most likely there would be like an income gap there. Um, so if you said like, hey, there's a, you know, you can put your, you can put the income levels and demographics, but if the retail stores don't really align with that, that can be a good double check on, you know, hey, does this actually match up or not? Now, social media is something that will help you double check too. But, you know, let's say for like if for all other families home, it'd be like Instagram, and then maybe a little more, you know, younger families, younger parents that are, you know, instead of posting things on Facebook, they're posting on Instagram. Uh, would be, or at least that would be like their favorite social media campaign. And that one's not like, again, these aren't like the make or break, you know, hey, this is where our target market is. These are just to help you kind of frame it in as much as possible as you can. Um, the more details you can understand about the lifestyle of your customer and the more you can get like a general, you know, you can understand their lifestyle, the much better. And so that way when you, you know, when they say like, hey, here's my problem, or like, here's the value I need from you, you can put it in their lens and really understand what they need. Okay, so now you have your competitor target markets and hopefully you have a pretty good understanding or pretty good grasp on what their target market is. Let's actually define what your target market is. And we're gonna do just kind of a brief, what, the, what we're doing in this exercise is more higher level. We're not getting super in depth. The more in depth you get on your target market, the absolute better. Because the more you can hit that bullseye, the more you're gonna be able to understand what they're doing and be able to solve their problem fantastically. And the more you do that, the more they're gonna tell their friends and family or whoever they're working with. And the more they do that, the more business you're probably gonna get. So we want that word of mouth that you know you always want in your business to get it going. You want that to be circulating. The only way you get that is if you really know your target market If and doing that so that your product or service just crushes their problem that they're facing and what they're feeling and it gives them just like tears of joy almost. That's the kind of feeling that you want to be able to give to your customers and the only way to do that is knowing your target market. So we're not going to go through all this again because it's the same steps that we just did with your competitors. Now do it for your own business. So do the demographics, do the um, where are they spending their free time, where do they do it, like where do they want to shop, Is their favorite stores and if you have or what's their favorite social media. Um, go through that insane stats for your own target market and then also ask people that are like advisors and mentors to actually go through this with you or critique what you're doing and see if they push back on you. Um, and then if you're also doing like problem interviews right now, um, you can actually could probably test this if you have some you know, customers that you're starting to get to know better or if you're doing customer inter interviews with people that you feel pretty comfortable with, um, actually test this out. See like you can even ask them like what's your favorite retailer, what's your favorite such, like Snapchat or social media ask these really specific things because the more you can understand their lifestyle, the more you're gonna understand them and their problems. So go through it, take your time with this one, and the more in-depth and details you can give, the absolute better. Okay, here is the Foundry Co. ice cream target market. And so let's go with demographics first. And demographics for this one, we're gonna say families with children under 10 years old. So we're not just saying families and teens, and that, we don't want it super broad, we want it to be more narrow and this we can go way more in depth on this and that's what you want to do you want to be able to say like hey here's the income levels here's you know you know there might they might be middle class they might be you know where do they where do they work um, the more in depth you get on this the better you want to think about this as kind of like a census you know if, if you're doing a census for your target market what would that be then for their free time all right so like what do they do after work what do they do after school what are they doing with their with their children? Like, where can we like potentially put some marketing or you know, yeah, some marketing efforts into, um, so that you know they're spending time maybe at like a kid's soccer game on Saturday mornings, or they're playing with Legos, um, they're playing with maybe different toys, they're watching a lot of Frozen maybe. Um, who knows what they might be doing? But that's what you want to test out um, and see. Okay, what are they doing with their free time? And then for this case, because we said they're maybe more middle class and maybe you know. They're not, you know, maybe not the Whole Foods, but they're not like a, you know, really like, you know, dollar store. They're kind of middle class. So we're going to say um, their favorite retail store is Target. Um, and then social media, well, they're younger families. So we're going to assume that it's Snapchat for their social media that they like the best. And again, these are all just assumptions and you want to be able to test these as much as possible. So the more you can talk to your customers and check it out, 
do it and test it. You can, you can even ask me, what is your re favorite retail store? You can understand why and like then understand why it is their favorite retail store and go from there uh, when you are talking to your potential customers. So again, that test these assumptions and that's the Founder Co. ice cream um, target market. And definitely if you have some time, go really go as far and as deep as you possibly can with this because the more you can understand their lifestyle, the better the better you're gonna do as a business most likely. All right, so now we're in the third part of this workshop, how to actually use what your target market is. Now, there's two, the way we think about it is in two different ways, in your product development and your marketing, which is a majority of your business. Um, so let's go over product development first. So like we've been talking about, you can create a product or service and nail that customer experience and really nail their problem. That's what our goal is, and this is how it's gonna affect product development. Now, the third way is it's gonna, like when you get customer feedback, especially if you're doing problem interviews right now, you're getting it loaded with customer feedback, you're getting tons and tons of feedback, and hopefully you're getting feedback all the time. And if you are like shipping product and things like that, you're constantly wanting feedback. And if you know what your target market is and have defined it, you can actually help kind of narrow in what feedback is good and what's valuable or what's more valuable or not, like as or less valuable. You can actually can do that if you know your target market because then you're getting because sometimes you'll have customers that aren't necessarily your target market they're kind of on the fringe and the fringe customers you don't necessarily want to build a product for because if they're just like you know maybe maybe there's like two or three of them in the whole world well that's not who we're building a product for we want to build a product that's actually you know your main core business um, so if you're getting feedback from those kind of people you know you can take it with more of a grain of salt rather than the people that are like hey this is our target market now, it also can tell you, hey, like this type, you're actually in the tar different target market than you actually thought you were. So that's another good way to actually validate who your target market is. You actually, if you have these different personas built out. So if you have different products or services or you're not, you're doing this exercise and you don't necessarily know, you know what your target market is still, that's okay. Like build, a three, build three of them and test them out with, your, with the customer interviews or just feedback and sessions in general. Now, the third way it's gonna help product development is actually it's going to help you decide on features because if you're in, you know, if, especially if you're like doing a hardware startup, it's really easy to be like, oh my gosh, we want features and features and features and features so I can keep building them out. Well, features aren't really expensive to build out if you're building a lot of them. We want to build, you know, the smallest amount of features that provide enough value where your customer is like, hey, I want to give you a check or money to actually buy your product. Um, so that's what we want to do. And having this target market defined, it can help you dramatically figure out which features to actually build out and what's, which ones are most important. All right, so the final part is the marketing side of it. Now, if you have a target market defined and you actually know the lifestyle like the back of your hand, you're gonna be able to get so much more creative on the marketing side and because marketing at the end of the day is just a really, you want to be super creative with it and be able to get in front of your customers in a really unique way. Those are usually the best marketing campaigns and sometimes they're really simple and like stupid, stupid simple. So having this target market and you really understanding that is gonna allow you to think through that more creatively and not just do like Facebook ads or like the, the typical things that you hear all the, all the time. If you really know your target market, you're gonna be like, there'll be like obvious things hopefully that ring out and be like, oh my gosh, we could sponsor this or that or we can do this. Hopefully, like when you're going through this, like and you understand their lifestyle, you can actually can picture things where you, you could be at to create, create more awareness or engagement with your potential customers. Now, the second way it can, it'll help your marketing is it'll actually help you narrow down for experimentation. We talked about this a little bit. The more you can do really specific experiments that are on, you know, on really narrow markets, the better. If you're trying to market to everyone or experiment with everyone, that's gonna be really, really costly. And we wanna, we, if you're a startup or a new business, you probably don't have those kind of resources. So we wanna be able to narrow into like maybe three personas tops um, and really like kind of narrow that down. So having these target markets or personas, we wanna have them built out so you actually can experiment within them. And then, you know, it'll tell you, you know, hey, this one's our better one, or this one doesn't work at all, or hey, this one is our best one. Having these personas will help you dramatically with actually just helping with cost dramatically because so you're not spending you know tons and tons of money on everybody you're spending money on really specific people now the third way is actually to actually understand how you fit in the competitive landscape and this is why we did the value proposition too if you know how your you know your, your value proposition what your competitors value proposition is and how they everyone has a different persona or you understand all of that that'll help you dramatically see understand the competitive landscape and how you fit within that that is our workshop on how to determine your target market. 
Now, if you're feeling stuck or you get stuck in any of these steps, you can talk with another founder, mentors, advisors always. But also, if you're being a Foundry Code member, you can go to community.foundryco.org and talk with other founders who are completing this workshop and going through maybe some similar circumstances. So talk with them. You're not alone. Go with founders. Be together. And also, if we can be any help, you can free to tag us in the community.foundryco.org community, online community, or email us at hello at foundryco.org. We are always happy to help, even if it doesn't relate to the workshops or anything like that. Um, our entire mission is to help you be more impactful, so please let us know if we can be any help. Again, hope you guys see you guys soon, and on to the next workshop.